So we are still on the chapter of divisibility in integral domains. We, in the previous video, we saw this concept of Euclidean domain, right? And um, so an Euclidean domain, an integral domain D is called an Euclidean domain. If there is a function D, from the non-zero elements of d to the non-negative integers such that 1 d of a is less or equal than d of a times b for all a and b in an integral domain a and b cannot be zero and second condition if a and b are in the domain b is not zero then there exist elements q and r such that a equals b q plus r where either r equals zero or the, the r is less than db. So this is the concept of Euclidean domain. And after that, in the previous video, we saw a theorem that says every Euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain. And we proved that. And now, in this video, we are going to see a corollary of the previous uh, theorem. The previous, previous theorem says that we proved a Euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain. And here, uh, as a corollary of the previous theorem, we can say a Euclidean domain is a unique factorization domain. So every Euclidean domain is a unique factorization domain. So if you just chain the, the theorems, you can say, previous theorem, this one, every Euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain. Okay. And every Euclidean domain is also a unique factorization domain. And of course, we will see that, or, or we just saw, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit lost here, that the principal ideal domain is a unique factorization domain. Okay, uh, if you don't remember the order, remember the alphabetic order E, P, and U. Okay, it's by alphabetical order. Euclidean domain means principal ideal domain, and that implies unique factorization domain. A, a unique factorization domain does not imply that it is a principal ideal domain, and a principal ideal domain does not imply that it is a Euclidean domain. Another quick theorem says that if D is a unique factorization domain, that means that, um, well, uh, yes, D a unique factorization domain. So the ring of polynomials is also a unique factorization domain. Uh, We're going to see an example now of a ring that it is a integral domain but it is not a unique factorization domain okay so i choose this example this ring here okay so this ring is nothing else but the ring of the set of a plus b where a and b in the integers a plus b square root of minus 5, okay, and we are going to prove that this is an integral domain, but not a unique factorization domain. Well, um, I'm not going to prove that this is an integral domain. Uh, if you're watching this, probably you watched all the previous videos, so you can, you can easily uh, prove or check that this ring is an integral domain. Okay, now let us see if it is a unique factorization domain. So what do we need for a, a unique factorization domain? So we are going to use the same method as we used before. So this is the, the n function. You can check a previous video for this. And so any element 
in this ring we'll have this so the n function will take to a squared plus 5b squared and we are going to use the same procedure as we used before because this condition has to hold uh, n of x y equals n of x times n of y for this function n right we use the letter n here because this is the norm right this is the norm function please check a previous video for that so here this will hold n of x norm of x y will be equal to n of x times n y but n of x will be 1 if and only if x is a unit right well so uh, so the only units here in this ring the only units are, are going to be plus 1 or minus 1 Okay, now we are going to consider the number, for instance, 46, an element in the... Let us factor 46. So 46 will be 2 times 23. But there is also another fact. 46 is also... Um, 46 can also be factored this way okay so you can check this okay just do the math this is really easy okay so we now um, we are going to to see that all these factors one two three four all these four uh, factors they are all in the ring They are all in the ring and they are all irreducible over the ring. Okay, so now I want to prove that these factors are irreducible over the ring. Okay, we are going to use a technique that we used before. Let us say that 2 equals xy, where x and y are in the ring but neither x or y is a unit well in that case 4 would be equals to the norm of 2 and the norm of 2 of 4 should be equal to the norm of x times the norm of y which means that the norm of x should be equal to the norm of y and they both should be equal to and this obviously is impossible uh, let us pick the other one uh, 23 right let us say that 23 let us say the same as we said here 23 uh, we can factor in a non-trivial factorization 23 Okay, uh, then n of x should be 23. Okay, but then there will never be integers a and b such that a is the norm a squared plus 5b squared equals 23. So these integers, they, they, they don't exist, right? There, there, there are no a and no b for this so uh, and, and, and now this proves what we wanted to prove so we proved that this um, uh, it's impossible to factor into two units and you can do the same for this one okay it's a bit more messy but it's the same so we just saw that in this this ring is a integral domain you can check that but it is not a unique factorization domain they are not because all these factors are not irreducible in the ring uh, 